My name is Wayne Arthurson, and I'm here in Edmonton, and I'm going to read you from my novel, Fall from Grace. It's a crime novel, so there's a body in it, which starts the book. Do you want to see the body? It was not an unusual question. I've been asked it before, and will probably be asked it again. But the key question at the moment was whether to accept the offer this time, or to turn around and just walk away. We stood at the edge of a farmer's field, squinting even though it was overcast. That's part of life in the prairies. When the sky is more than two-thirds of your existence, there's no choice but to squint, even on an overcast day. At this time of year, the whole world was gray. The leaves had turned and fallen to the ground long ago, and golden stalks of grain had been harvested weeks before. And leaving behind stubby shoots, the cleansing white of the first snow could come sometime tonight or around Christmas. Who knew? If you're betting your life savings on the issue, save your cash and buy a lottery ticket. The only bit of color in the vicinity was the bright orange crime scene tent. Underneath that lay the body in question. The cop who had asked the question gestured towards the tent with his chin, keeping his hands in his pockets because, like most of us this time of year, he didn't think it was cold enough for gloves. When he stepped outside, he realized his mistake. Of course, he could have gone back to the house to get them, but that would have entailed several minutes of searching through a drawer or a box or a cupboard of winter clothing that had been forgotten since sometime last spring. And admitting that this collection of clothing still exists is a major psychological step in the annual life of Western Canadian, at least for those of us who live on the prairies. Denial plays a major role in this particular change of seasons. And for the cop to go back into his house and retrieve a pair of gloves and accept that winter was on his way was tantamount to admitting that he was an alcoholic or that his marriage was finally over and it was time to move on. Even so, if you're betting the, looking to bet something your life savings on, then bet that this cop would gloves tomorrow and would keep them sometime around April, or maybe even May, depending on what kind of winter we're having. Come on, he said with a grin. You got a few minutes before the rest of your gang shows up. I'm offering you an exclusive. I looked at him and sighed. Well, the last time you let me look at a body, Detective Woodford, well, let's just say it's something I really don't want to remember, but and I'm able to forget. This one's different, he said with a shrug. I shot him a quick glance of disbelief. I mean it, he quickly added. On you're a suspect of sorts, and in order to confirm or deny your involvement, I had a figure giving you warning of the condition of the body. Your reaction showed that you were not involved. In the end, it all worked out, didn't it? Well, maybe for you, but for me, it's a visual image I could have done without. Okay, although I won't apologize for what I did, I am sorry that you had to go through it, he said, play, pulling a hand out of his jacket pocket and placing it on my shoulder. Consider this offer as my way to make it up to you. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, I said with a cruel laugh. You want to make up for showing me a dead body by offering to show me another dead body? I thought I was the one with mental problems, but you are something else. Listen, Leo, he said, enunciating his words to make a point. This one is different, I promise you. And this time, you're not a suspect. You're only a journalist out here on a story. And at the moment, you're the only journalist. But there will be others, and the offer I'm making now will expire the instant I see one of the vehicles come over the horizon. You can't tell me that it won't make your story better. You've got a quick look at the body. I sighed. He was right. The other lemmings were no doubt only a few minutes behind me. We would all have the same story of an unknown dead body in the field, with all the photos showing the same orange crime scene tent in the distance. The only way to make my story stand out, even from the moving pictures and early supper deadlines at the TV stations, to accept Whitford's offer, step into that tent, get up close and personal with the body. I looked back at Whitford. He was sporting a smile that intimated he had read every thought that had run through my head. Okay, you got me, I said, shaking my head. Okay, hi, it's me, Wayne, again. I'm on my trampoline out here. In Edmonton, I have an exercise for you. It's not a specific exercise. What I want you to do is I want you to start a short story or a set of poems or an essay and I want you to finish it without any outside help. I want you to do all the rewrites, all the edits without showing it to anybody or without asking for input. And this way you'll learn to trust your instincts of writer and to figure out what is good and what works for you. So an essay, a set of poems, or whatever, and do it all by yourself right to the final draft. Don't show it to anybody until you're done or until you think you're done. Got it? Good.
Hi, it's Wayne again, and uh, we're going to talk about what books I think you should read. And these are my books, um, but you don't have to read all of them. It'd be nice if you did, but you don't have to. Uh, but what books you should read? Um, I don't care. Just read books. Um, there's no one book that really changed my life. I've read thousands of books in my life, and all of them have changed my life. So read as many books as you can. Uh, magazines, newspapers, stuff online. Just read. I don't care what you read. Just read. That's all you need to do. If you want to be a writer, you have to write. If you want to be a writer, you have to read. That's it. Oh, that was terrible. That. Ah. <laughs> okay. Ready? You're going to get it this time. Hi, it's Wayne again. And here's a bit of advice on being a writer. Um, if you want to be a writer, um, one way is to get um, some um, drum and play in a rock band. That's another way. But if you really want to be a writer, one thing you have to do, I know it's really simple, but you have to sit down and actually write. So don't talk about being a writer. Actually sit down at your laptop or whatever you write on, you write longhand, and actually do some writing. And if you're looking at writing in the future, if you're pretty young now, look at careers as a writer, so a journalist or a copywriter for an advertising magazine, a PR professional, or someone who writes video games. And there's a lot of writing jobs out there, so consider that. So main thing, but if you want to be a writer, you have to write. If you don't write, you're not a writer. Thanks. Ah, got that one.